Warhammer 2 just keeps getting better, man. The Hunter and the Beast embargo is lifted. Nakai the Wanderer, Marcus Wolfhart, and Gorok the Great White Homie are fair game, but we keep getting news. And this is the kind of content that should warm the heart of even the most grizzled old grumbler, the most ornery Warhammer Fantasy Battle fans on the planet. Because the legendary Gotrek Garnison and Felix Jaeger are coming to Mortal Empires as the old friends this fall. In September, in fact, a lot of people speculated about it, and it appears those people were correct. Two of the most iconic characters in Warhammer Fantasy Battle, period, come into Warhammer 2. Top 5 for sure, on the shortlist with maybe, I don't know, Thankwall, Malice Darkblade, and a handful of others. Franz, Archeon, those kind of people. That iconic. And their story arc is pretty much the recommended jump off point for new people first getting their feet wet with the setting. If you've never read a Black Li Library novel before, Go Trek and Felix is as good a place as any to start, and I definitely recommend the series. On the one hand, you've got the world's worst slayer, a demigod of destruction who lost his family, murdered the kinsdwarf who rubbed it in his face, then took the oath of Grimnir. A slayer who cannot die, an avatar of ass-kicking who has battled and beaten a who's who of famous named characters. He's faced down Krell, Throg, Bellacor the Dark Master, and lived to tell about it. He's killed bloodthirsters and greater demons, and become a living incarnation of death in Slayer form. He took the place of Grimnir in the warp, holding back the hordes of chaos in a solo battle against the ruinous powers, and he was ranked second on mine and Sotek's list of the most powerful melee fighters in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. And returning to the current lore in Age of Sigmar, he is going to be voiced by none other than Brian Blessed, a beloved and beautiful bastard of butchery who can carve through hordes of demons, skaven, and anything the ruinous powers can throw at him. He's a boss, and he's come in this September. And then on the other hand, we have Felix Jaeger, the linchpin of this iconic duo, and the true protagonist of the Gotrek and Felix series. Just a dude who likes writing poetry, laying the pipe, and partying his balls off until, in the middle of a drunken stupor, he made a blood oath to Gotrek to record his deeds, and his eternal search for a worthy death. And so he essentially becomes a 40k remembrancer of sorts, whose job it is to record the deeds and daring do of monster slaying and adventure time that makes their stories so iconic. Constantly balancing his desire to escape the boring mercantile life with the omnipresent fear of death and dismemberment he experiences every time he travels with our favorite Mohawk Dawi. So where Gotrek is kind of doom guy incarnate, rip and tear until it is done, Felix is this handsome, logical, romantic type we can all relate to. Besides, you know, banging every supermodel in the Reichland and becoming functionally immortal through proximity to some of the most powerful magical items in the setting. They are a really fun duo that plays off each other incredibly nicely in their story arc, and seeing them make it into Total War Warhammer is a dream come true for a lot of fans. But how are they going to function in Mortal Empires? How are they going to work in Warhammer 2? That's the big question. We have some juicy details on that. So, as we've already implied, they are adventurers and mercenaries, always on the hunt for something bigger and badder to slay. They work in a pair. They can take down anything they put their mind to. And any Imperial, Dwarf, or Bretonian faction can recruit them as a mercenary force for hire, with Gotrek taking command of an army and Felix as his hero underling. Now, Gotrek doesn't really lead armies in the lore, but he's so famous and so powerful that many would take up arms just to be anywhere near him, and would gladly follow him into battle. So think of it more as a begrudging figurehead in Gotrek's case, rather than a true leader of men or Dawi. But functionally, he will serve the role as a general, if that's how you want him to be used. They can function as an army just by themselves. You could send Gotrek and Felix out into the middle of a horde, and I bet you against like a low-tier Skaven stack, they would probably end up doing quite well, or you could send them off around the world on adventures of their own, give them a bunch of troops, and go loot whatever citadel across the world you want them to. So, if you give them a bunch of troops, they can function just like any other army, and they'll only stick around the campaign for about 20 turns or so before Gotrek's Slayer Oath drives them off into some wild new adventure without your faction in tow. But they'll both be back multiple times throughout the course of your campaign, so if you want to hire them again sometime later down the line, that is an option that will be available to you. And oftentimes they'll bring new enemies and a significantly buffed skill tree upon their return. So I imagine when either one of them are fully kitted out, 
they are going to be some of the best duelists in the setting. Now, Gotrek still might have a few of the same issues we've seen with the Dwarf Lords before, but there have been some changes now to their mass, and obviously, if he doesn't get knocked down with that huge monstrous large and that huge weapon strength, he's probably going to kick some serious ass. And it's going to be pretty interesting to see how they actually function on the campaign map, which will probably be quite a bit different than how they work in multiplayer. In multiplayer, probably going to be decent, relatively useful, not really massive deal there, but in terms of the campaign, when you fully buff them up on their skill tree, probably pretty strong. Now they have actually already been shown off. Zerkovich could somehow use them in his build. I don't know how that happened. I'm not sure why he had them because they were not supposed to be playable during this round of early access, but he might have been given the wrong code. I'm really not sure. I do know Zerkovich didn't do anything wrong. He didn't hack the game. He didn't do anything bad there. He just happened to get lucky and somehow get the only early access build out of all of us with Gotrek and Felix unlocked. But if you take a look at the screens from his video, you can see their stats and their models in the flesh. Zerkovich has really good channel, by the way. You should go check him, check him out. Make some really good content over there. Link will be in the pinned comment. But uh, yeah, it was weird because CA didn't even have an embargo on content, including Gotrek and Felix, because they were not supposed to be even playable or in the game in the first place. So whole thing is really weird. I'm not sure what happened. But Felix is an anti-infantry armor-piercing hero with a regen aura for nearby friendly lords and heroes in melee something that will obviously synergize incredibly well with his Slayer buddy. He can buff Lords, Damage Resist, and Melee Attack with a single target ability. So, say you have Karl Franz or an Empire General on a Griffin running into an enemy battle line, you can pop that buff on them, give them the Damage Resist, give them some of that Health Regen when he's in Melee, and the Lords in Melee as well, give them Melee Attack, and you're going to make them pretty strong. And he also has that AoE and Courage of nearby troops. Dude kind of looks like a homeless crackhead on the verge of death, I'm not going to lie. So I think maybe that face needs a bit of touching up before it goes live. Not quite living up to the handsome womanizer he's portrayed as in the lore. He's kind of known for being, uh, well, like I said, he, he, he lays the pipe with all, all the hot chicks he can find. But hardly going to be the first character, first hot character in Total War Warhammer to turn out kind of unattractive. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, but it is funny sometimes they get ca does a really good job on faces sometimes it's more middling and mediocre i'd say this probably leans a little bit more towards the mediocre but could just be an early image of him and not fully representative of how he will finally look in the official screens he looks great but those obviously have a higher render quality than you'll typically be seeing in game the in-game one not amazing but we'll see him again not gonna lose any sleep over it he wields the rune sword Karagul, a relic of the knightly order of the fiery heart forged to kill dragons uses that in the lore quite a few times to avoid getting burned to cinder and it gifts its wielder with a magic shield against dragon flame and fills their heart with courage in the face of terrifying beasts like drakes and dragons don't know yet if that will have any effect on his campaign skill tree but pretty awesome there now for gotrek gurnison He's the only Slayer available for the Empire, obviously. He's unbreakable, magic damage with huge melee attack values, charge defense, damage resistance, regen when he's on low health, and damage buffs for killing monsters with his bonus versus large. Probably going to be one of the best monster hunting heroes or lords in Total War Warhammer 2. At least if CA wants to uh, give him or make him live up to his lore. His Runex of Grimnir has tasted the ichor of greater demons and dragons, and that stat line, that beefy stat line, makes him look like an unarmored beast, which is exactly what he should be. He should be a beast. Wouldn't have it any other way. I'm not sure yet if they will be Empire only in custom battle, or also available to the dwarfs and Bretonia in multiplayer as well, but either way, it should be a really fun combination to try out on the battlefields of Total War. They'll be available exclusively in September's print issue of White Dwarf Magazine, very similar to the marketing campaign that CA ran with Grombrindel a few years back. For those who don't have access to the White Dwarf, though, or who don't want to pay for the magazine, Gotrek and Felix will be available for free through Total War Access once October 17th rolls around. So they'll be coming out about a month later if you don't want to deal with White Dwarf. So overall, I am incredibly hyped for... Again, two of the most iconic characters in Warhammer Fantasy Battle. A lot of us grew up reading these stories. 
I personally did not, I actually didn't get into Warhammer Fantasy Battle until uh, shortly before Total War Warhammer was announced, but I have read Go Trek and Felix. It's really good. Few of the novels are hit or mess, but for the most part, it is a great way to spend a uh, cozy Saturday afternoon reading some of those novels and they're gonna be awesome in Warhammer 2. Super hyped to see them. What do you guys think of Go Trek and Felix? Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the reveal. And I will see you all next time on Milk and Cookies Total War. Stay classy, San Diego.